Hello everyone and welcome to our physics engine. We are creating a physics engine from scratch using C Sharp. Uh, let's take a look at where, I, where we left off. Um, so we have the ability to add bodies to our world using uh, by just clicking with the mouse on the scene. Uh, right now just uh, box bodies and circle bodies we can put in here. And you can see what's happening right now. That's as far as we've gotten. Today's just going to be a short video and I'm just going to add the ability to make axis aligned bounding boxes around our objects or around our bodies. And the axis line bounding box is nice because it'll give us a general sense of where they exist in the world. So before we have to do any complex calculations, we can, we can do an axis line bounding box test to see which objects are close together. And today what I'm going to use it for is just to find out if the objects have fallen off the edge of the world. So if they've gone, if the objects have gone below what we can see in our scene or what the camera can see, I want to go ahead and get rid of them. All right, so let's go back to our code here. Here is our flat physics library. I'm going to add a new structure. And I'm going to call this the flat AABB, and that'll be for axis aligned bounding box. Okay, there's all of that. It's going to have two fields. Uh, we're going to have a min vector and a max vector. Okay, and what that looks like, uh, we'll just pretend that this is an axis aligned bounding box. And uh, for our coordinate system up, or positive y is up and positive x is to the right. And so this would be our min vector on the box and this would be our max vector. And with those two vectors, we, we can find all four of these edges just like this. Okay, back in our code, let's go ahead and make the constructors. Okay, so I just passed the values on through. And I want to have one more constructor that will allow us to pass in the edges themselves. So the min and max on the x and the min and max on the y. And then we'll just go ahead and create these vectors. Okay, so now we have the ability to create an axis line bounding box. Let's go back to our flat bodies now. So inside of our flat body, I want to create a function that will allow us to create an axis line bounding box uh, based on what type of body it is, whether it's a circle or a polygon, or in our case, a, uh, a box. Okay, and so right here, I'm just going to add a new function. This is going to return an AABB, and I'm going to call this uh, get axis line bounding box. What we're going to do here is we're just going to look at what kind of shape this is and we're going to create the bounding box from that shape. Okay, so there's our function. Um, it's going to check to see if it's a box or if it's a circle. And if it's not any of those, it's going to throw an exception saying this is an unknown shape type. And basically the only reason we're putting that there, the exception there, is to, sh is to show me when there's a bug in the code. But we should never get to that point. It should always be either a circle or a box. And eventually we'll have uh, general polygon shapes that we're allowed to use. Whether it's a box or a polygon, this function is going to work for either one of those. Let's start with the easiest one, finding the bounding box around a circle. So if I'm going to draw what that looks like, um, this is our circle and here's our center point. Um, basically we want to find out all of these edges here. Okay, just like that. And we can find that by starting at the center point. And then just moving by the radius along each of the axes. Okay, so if we're at the center and we go up by the radius, we'll find the top edge. And then we can move by the radius along each one of the axes to find uh, the edges just like that. Okay, um, I want to be able to get the minimum and maximum values. So I'm going to define that up here. I'm just going to make variables for the min and max along the x and y axis. Okay, and then uh, for the circle type, um, this is going to be very simple. The uh, min of the x is just going to be the position of the object, or the position of the body, which is going to be the center of the circle. Uh, the x coordinate, and we're going to subtract the radius. Okay, min y is going to be the same thing. Okay, and then the max x and max y is going to be the same thing, so let's just copy that. Except we're going to add the radius instead of subtracting the radius. Okay, that's it for that. Um, at the end, we're just going to return a new axis line bounding box. Okay, so that's it for the circle shape. Um, now the polygon shape is a little bit more complicated. First, we need to get all of the vertices by the transform vertices. And whether it's a box or just a general convex polygon, this is going to work for either one of those shapes. Uh, let's just pretend that this is a rotated box from our engine. Uh, we just want to loop through all of the vertices and determine which ones are the min and max along each one of the axes. Okay, and we'll end up with something that kind of looks like that. Not a very good drawing, but it'll look something like that. So back in our code, let's go ahead and get the transform vertices. Okay, and I'm just going to loop through all of the vertices. Oh, and actually, um, this needs to be a vertex array, so let me change that there. 
Okay, let's loop through all of the vertices. Okay, so now that we have the vertex, we're just going to compare the current vertex to all of our minimum and maximum values, and then uh, save the new min and max um, as appropriate. Let's just copy that, and we'll do the same thing for the uh, y coordinates. Okay, there we go. So at the end of this loop, we'll have the minimum and maximum, and then we can come down here and return the min and maximum for our flat uh, axis line bounding box. And I'm not sure if I want to do this, but one thing I could do is, is I could try caching the axis line bounding box. So maybe in our flat body up here at the top, I make a field, um, a flat AABB, and we'll call this, um, well, maybe we'll just call it AABB. And then I could have another field that ashes the axis line bounding box. Um, so we'll determine um, AABB, we'll call this uh, axis line bounding box update required. Um, just like we did for the transform, we were kind of cache, we're, we're caching the transform and only updating it when we needed to. So maybe I want to cache the axis line bounding box as well. So I'm going to go ahead and write the code to cache our axis line bounding box. I'm not sure if that's going to give us any kind of performance increase or if, or if most of the time it's just going to have to cal recalculate it every time or not. But um, let's go ahead and write that and we can do some performance metrics later to see if it's actually helping or not. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll down here to our constructor and let's add those new fields that I just uh, put in there. And that would be down here. I'm going to put that the uh, update required for the axis line bounding box is true. Okay, so I've got the uh, update uh, for axis line bounding box is true. So down in our function now, um, here's where we get the axis line bounding box. If the update required for axis line bounding box is true, then we're going to go ahead and do this code right here. And instead of returning a new axis line bounding box, let's just go ahead and set the um, axis, line, axis line bounding box to that value. And then we're also going to tell it that uh, the, now the update required is false, since we just made sure to do that. And then we'll return the axis line bounding box from our body. OK, that should be everything we need to get an axis line bounding box. Um, let's go ahead and compile this just to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so it compiled successfully. Uh, now I'm gonna go back into the game class. So right now uh, we're dropping bodies into the world. What I want to do is use the axis line bounding box of the objects to determine if they've fallen off the edge of the screen. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll up here. I'm in the game class. I'm gonna scroll up to our update function. And here's where we do the world step in our uh, game update. And just below this, I'm gonna loop through all of the bodies in the world. And I'm gonna find out if they've fallen off the edge of the view, what we can see in our camera. And if they have, I'm gonna remove them from the list. So first of all, let's go ahead and get the extents of the camera. Okay, and uh, this basically gives us a bounding box for the camera itself, like what can the camera actually see in the screen. And I have one overloaded function here that allows me to get the left, the right, the bottom, and the top. And the only one I want is the bottom. So I, I want to get the, the bottom of the view and find out if the bodies have passed below that bottom. So the rest of these I'm just gonna, going to ignore. Uh, let's get the, I'm going to call this the view bottom. Okay, so now all I have to do here is loop through all of the bodies. Okay, now that I have the body, let's go ahead and get the axis line bounding box for that body. All right, and what I want to do is I want to determine if the top of the box is below what the camera can view. Then we need to remove it from the world. I'm just going to get rid of it out of the list. So if the top of the box, which is um, it's going to be the max on the Y, is uh, less than or equal to, we'll just do less than, is less than what the camera can view. So I'm going to put the view bottom. Uh, then we want to get rid of it. Um, let's go ahead and remove the body there. And then I also want to remove the colors that we're using in our color list. So up here at the top of our game class, um, I have a list of colors, and there's one for each body in the world. And so then I just need to remove those colors from the list as well. So uh, we're going to remove at, and I'm going to put I in there, and then the outline colors as well. Okay, so that should be it for doing that. Um, there's actually only one more thing I need to work on. So uh, back in our body class, um, I'm checking to see if the update is required, and I set that to true here um, in the constructor. Um, and then I set it back to false uh, inside of our get AABB function. I set it to false. I didn't. And there's a, well, there's a bug right there. I set it to true. So update required is now false. Okay. So there we go. So that, that fixed a bug anyways. I'm glad I came back and looked at it. But then I never set it back to true anywhere. So I need to go down to all of our functions that move the body or rotate the body in any shape or form 
and then I need to tell it that we want to um, set the update required to true. So here's our step function. I set the update AABB required to true because we're uh, either rotating or moving or both. Um, and then inside any of these move functions, I need to do the same thing. Okay, and I think that's it. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to our game class. There's uh, one more thing. Before we test this, there's one more thing I want to do. I want to be able to see how many bodies are in the world or get a printout to the screen somehow that tells me how many bodies are in the world. And so what I'm going to do is um, here's our update function. Here's where we're getting the keyboard inputs. I'm just going to have a... I'm going to make a, a keyboard click that'll allow me to print something to the screen or to the... Actually, I'm going to print it to the console. If I've clicked the tilde key... I'm going to use that to get some uh, information from, or just to print information to the console so I can see it. And if I've pressed that key, I want the console to write uh, how many bodies are in the world. So I'm going to put the body count here. Okay. And then we'll do some formatted text here. And we're going to just, we're, from the world, we're just going to retrieve the body count. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that and just see what happens. And I'm going to move this window over here just a little bit. And I'm going to bring over the console window over to the side. And so now if I press the tilde key, it's telling us we have one body in the world, and that's this one down here, the, the one we're using for our ground. And if I add another one, okay, so our body count is two, and our body count is six. Okay, so, and that looks true for everything we have. Okay, so I'm going to drop another one over here that's just going to fall off the edge. Um, seven right now, and it fell off, and we're back to six. Okay, so that looks good. So it looks like it's working just as it falls off. Um, so eight, and then we're back to six. Okay, that's perfect. Let's go ahead and just drop a bunch of bodies into the scene and see what we're getting for our readout. So 49, 49, and as they start to fall off the edge, we're getting 39, 30, 23, 20, 14. Okay, and that looks like it's working just fine. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I just wanted to have the ability to create an axis line bounding box for our bodies. All right, so that's our uh, axis line bounding box. And we're going to use that uh, eventually for our for our broad phase. Right now, our broad phase is basically very simple. It's just test every body against every other body to see if there's intersection. And we'll eventually use our broad phase um, and the axis line bounding boxes to determine which objects are close together and only test those. And the objects that are far apart, don't worry about uh, testing those objects. All right, so that's our uh, axis line bounding box creation.